we'll go through this pretty quickly then because I just want to get some updates out of the way. Introduce everyone to Dr. Rand and yeah, then just kind of break off into groups and get things rolling there. So um, yeah, hello everyone, let's get started. So agenda for today, pretty much what I just said, um, we're going to introduce everyone to Dr. Ann, our advisor, who um, walks us through um, the basics, uh, what our principles are, like, I mean, this is what she did for us when we first started the organization. Um, she walked us through what we were supposed to do. She taught us a lot of what we need to know in terms of um, our, out, our output, our uh, children we're making this for, and a lot of other things. So we're going to meet her, and well, I guess you already have, but um, meet her more. And then we're going to run through some updates and just kind of a general semester recap of what we've been doing so far, kind of somewhat behind the scenes and some stuff we've been filling you in on, um, just to fill in Dr. Ann and to anyone else who doesn't already know. And then we're going to break off into groups. So, um, uh, Dr. Ann, have you formally introduced yourself yet or? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. No problem. I think you had a slide with my good picture on it on there, actually. It's, it's kind of. This is just the one from your from like all of our call outs ever since. Yeah, I stuck it on everything. It's kind of an old picture, but that's beside <laughs> the point. Um, my hair has grown out tremendous. I actually have a ponytail. So <laughs> anyway, um, you want to go ahead and just put me, let's do, can you put me on the view where I, it's just me? Oh, I hate, yeah. Uh, you, me. That's a little, little bit better. That's that? better than nothing. Um, okay, so you guys probably wonder who I am. Um, I am a professor in engineering technology. Um, I am an engineer. Um, I also have an MBA. I got a PhD um, in engineering. And um, I worked in industry for close to 30 years, all told, when I add everything up. Uh, I started off in a nuclear power plant. And um, when I ended, I was a plant manager in a chemical extraction plant that extracted titanium from uh, chemicals. So all kinds of things I did through the years, uh, maintenance operations, um, facilities. So I'm super, super familiar with a bunch of stuff. I'm a ham radio operator. Uh, so I've done lots and lots of microelectronics, um, you know. So anyway, I'd gotten to know, I'm actually faculty fellow at Earhart. And uh, the floor that I had the first year I did it, okay, we talked and we decided that we were gonna do something really cool. And, and I had heard about um, adapting toys for kids through a variety of places. And I said, what do you guys think about that? And they got really excited and went to a seminar at a conference that I went to. I took the, uh, one of them to Columbus, Ohio, and, and we came back and she started, she started the club. Um, basically, the idea is we've got a lot of little kids who have different disablements due to a lot of things, okay? Um, and they can't play with toys like normal kids. And, you know, have you ever seen a kid sit and stare at somebody because they can't join in? Well, this is even worse because physically they can't join in, and that, and that just makes it really, really hard on them. And so um, the initial uh, officers, that was their goal. Um, we've tried to keep it local because we've just had trouble getting started up to get to the local point. Um, I think we're starting to do a really good job. You guys are getting you're more organized. You've got plans. Uh, you got the subgroups. That's super important. And then it, just to watch. I'm I'm hoping we're we're going to try to get some videos of some of the kids playing with the toys that you guys adapted, so that you can actually see what their disabilities are and how much joy they actually get out of what you do for them. It's just, it's amazing when they can watch a toy sing and dance and otherwise it would just sit there, that's huge. You know, the one, I, whenever I think about that, I think about this one little guy that I met. Um, he was in a wheelchair. He couldn't move his arms or his legs. The only thing he had was his head. And so they Velcroed one of those big buttons to his chair. And then he would, he would pick a toy by looking at it and they would put it on the tray on his chair and they'd plug it in and he'd sit there with his head. He'd be dancing to the music, couldn't move much, but boy, he was happy as all get out. You could tell he was having a great time. Just seeing that was so cool. I mean, that's what really motivates us, you know? Um, we've been really fortunate. We're starting to get some good press. We've had some organizations on the outside that have tried to 
tap into our knowledge and I'm that concerns me because they're actually out there trying to make some money and we don't we don't want them to do that from us we want to stay you know we're non for profit we're doing for the good of the community so Cooper and I've really struggled with trying to keep it that way because there's been he'll come back and go hey look at this really cool thing and when we look it up they're out there to make some money and that's not what we want now what we have had that's very cool is one of the special ed teachers over in the education department has um, expressed interest in working uh, with us a little bit. She's got lots and lots of contacts. So we're gonna start working with her a little bit more and pulling all that together. And hopefully we'll be able to work with some older kids too. So that's, that's something else that we're looking at. And um, she and I had a nice conversation a couple of weeks ago and Cooper's had a chance to meet her now. She's, she's pretty cool. Um, she's really into adopting kids and fostering and just taking on some of the kids. Some people won't, won't even get near because they're just afraid. They don't know how to interact with them or anything. And I'll be honest with you. I've had a lot of experience. Um, my own daughter was a foster child and we adopted her. Um, she's got a number of disabilities that we've been able to overcome. It takes time and effort and um, allowing someone to actually do things on their own and learn that they can do them. And that's, that's what we're here doing in this club. And I think that's super huge. The other one you probably don't know about is almost eight years ago now, my husband had a massive stroke and almost died. And I've been working on bringing him back. And if we ever see you in person, he loves coming to the meetings and seeing what people do. Cooper, Cooper's met him many times. I think Madison, you have too, uh, Andre as well. He um, usually just sits in the back real quiet and watches and, and listens. Um, he has a disability with speech, um, you know, so I'm real familiar with a lot of the different things that can go wrong physically. And I think, uh, I think you guys are doing a great service to the community and hopefully we can expand it a little bit as time goes on. So very, very critical. Um, Cooper, is there anything I'm missing? Um, I was going to go over like, like in the recap, like people were partnering with and projects that we're doing. So if you have any comments okay. on those, by all means. Um, um, right off the top of my head, no, but maybe when you're sharing, I'll, I'll pipe in. That's fine. Yeah, sure. Uh, if anyone's wondering, I do have eight grad students. Um, I also teach a 300 and a 400 level course. Uh, over the summer, I'll be teaching 300, 400, and then in the spring, in the fall, I'll be teaching um, honors. I'll be teaching an honors course and the 300, the 400 level course again. So, lots and lots going on during the pandemic. Until my doctors release me, uh, for a variety of reasons you can imagine, um, I will be teaching virtually and meeting virtually with people. So this is what it looks like in my room. <laughs> Um, and that's fine. I actually have a cert certificate in teaching online. So I tend to tend to do things a little differently than some folks do. So that's, that's pretty critical. So anyway, um, we can go on from there. And if you guys, you know, if you need something or want something, just type in, you know, ampersand, Dr. Ann, and I'll respond. I'm usually on group meet quite a bit. I require my students to be on there so that we can actually communicate all the time. And they communicate all the time. So anyway, Cooper, it's all yours now. All right, awesome, thank you. I think that was great. Um, okay, yeah, so if uh, you, Dr. Ann, or anyone else has any notes on um, anything I'm about to go over that I may have missed, uh, by all means. Uh, See, doesn't that in. look better with my haircut? See? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel like, yeah, every year we update the pictures and I feel like we did not do that service to you and I'm sorry. We'll no, no, you that. could you could keep that one. That's a nice picture that was done professionally. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so um, our next thing, yeah, potential partners. So this is kind of like some student orgs on campus that we that reached out to us and that we've been reaching out to. Um, as far as we have yet to determine whether um, any of them are for profit or not, we know that a good, at least two out of, no, three out of four of them aren't. Um, we're not sure about Tech Owl. Anyway, so um, RISE is a Purdue student org that reached out to us and um, they, it's, uh, we've been communicating with them. They've been very interested in what we do. They are, it seems like they basically um, like put together uh, like sports equipment 
and help work the community for disabilities um, for children with disabilities and uh, into the sports community. So anyone who's like to be athletic, they do wheelchairs. I've seen, I think I've seen a couple of prosthetics in there too. So they've been doing a few stuff like that. Um, it's very early, so we're still communicating with them uh, and trying to figure out what specifically they had in mind because they reached out to us. And Tech Owl was something similar. They seem to be a bit further along um, in terms of certain projects. They reached out to us in terms of uh, like our button project and they were interested in what we were doing there and I let them know. And so we're still in touch there, but it's again, very early on. And they are based in some other Midwestern school that does not come to mind. Um, uh, let's see, JP actually helped us reach out to the honors committee, committee um, who is willing to help us put together an event of our choosing. Um, and we figured a toy drive might work best because they'll be willing to help put that together as long as we give them the guidelines. Seems like they're willing to run it. Um, am I missing anything there, JP? Uh, pretty much you got it. We had our meeting on Sunday. We just talked about, and we, we confirmed that they confirmed that they would be happy to work with us. So now, I'm sort of working on both sides to facilitate with the clubs, but they're they're open they're ready to do it. They're open for it. If we t give them a list of stuff that's important to us and say this is what we want to do, probably a toy drive or just a fundraising drive, and then we use the money to buy toys would work best for them. But that's kind of the plan right now: make some money, get some toys. Well, so the question I have is if they do a fund drive, do they get some of the funds too? Uh, as far as I know, they wouldn't keep any of the funds mm. because they don't like use the money ah. for anything. So last semester we coordinated a couple events and we got, we applied to get money from Purdue to host the events, but we didn't keep okay. any money. All right. I'm not familiar with them. That's why I'm asking. So it's yeah. not like this is um, some sort of a um, outreach project for them that they would be helping us out. Yeah, they'd be trying to, so what they gain is exposure for the Honors College in oh, cool. our community. And what we gain is exposure and hopefully toys and money. Mm -hmm. Cool. Good. Yeah. Interesting. Because running that, something like that right now might be tricky, at least with toys. A fundraiser could be cool, especially since we didn't yeah. do, especially since we didn't do day, of, we're not doing day of giving this semester. Um, but in any case, yeah, this could be really cool. For those who don't know, we did try a toy drive about a year and a half ago. Um, didn't go well because it was very last minute. We had never done anything like that before. We were like half the size of what we are now. Um, but if we had someone who was able to do the more managerial side of things, that could be really, really helpful for us. Yeah, part of that was you were trying to collect at Meyer and stuff like that, and that was... Yeah. Oh, wait. No, we no, we stayed on campus for most of it. Oh, did you? Okay, you didn't yeah. do that, that far yeah. out. I thought you did. Or, okay. Or we did We did a couple locations, but not. I don't think we did. Okay. Oh, wait, we did do Meyer. It was a while ago. I know. Um, <laughs> Uh, and then Purdue Engineering Outreach, um, basically they, uh, I'm also a part of that organization that was the meeting I just came from actually. <laughs> um, they do uh, STEM activities for children to help teach them about various STEM fields basically. Um, JP was also kind enough to reach out to them uh, for project collaboration. Am I missing anything there, JP? Um, so she, I just got a response from them. They said that they were open to collaborating, but don't have anything planned. And I gave just a suggestion of like a workshop where kids and their parents choose one of their toys to give to someone else. And like we guide them through the modification process. That was just an idea. We can talk more about other stuff. I'll try to set up a Zoom meeting or just a meeting with her to talk about exactly like the scope of what they can do, but we can figure out what we want either now or at the end of the meeting with just the officers. Okay, awesome. Uh, yeah, so we're pretty interconnected with them. I'm, I'm friends with a couple of the, I'm friends with the president and a couple others. And I know a couple other people in this club are also in that club. So they're familiar with it. Um, but yeah, they could be a really cool resource potentially. Um, in terms of other partners, uh, the more impactful ones in certain cases, 
Um, we have Rachel Friend. She's been, the ones in bold are ones that we carried over from last semester. So Rachel Friend, she's been with us um, since the beginning of the club's, or not the beginning of the club's creation, but Glass. No, she took us. over from, there was a, Glass has been with us. Um, mm -hmm. There was another lady before her and she retired. Right, right. So then Rachel, that's where we had a little bit of a gap problem about a year ago. Mm -hmm. So right now she's just a teacher who we're in direct contact with. She takes all the toys, gives us feedback. Um, still in touch with her right now. I should, uh, I'm planning on sending her another email soon. Um, Jasmine is the one that Dr. Ann was talking about before, um, who works with foster children and adopts. And she's really cool. She reached out to us actually, and, um, and offered her services to come in and speak uh, about different uh, areas of our organization and the community. So that will probably be happening at some time in March, but um, yeah, she's really cool and has a lot of experience and could potentially get us connected with specific families so that we could eventually get um, uh, requests, like specific requests for toys that are to be adapted for specific disabilities. So as opposed to what we're doing now, which is kind of general stuff, like uh, adapting a general toy for um, any general kind of disability, physical or um, uh, intelligence related, um, this would be more specific for a child and family. Mm -hmm. um, we now have Christy Gall since uh, last week, actually, well, a couple of weeks ago, we kind of contacted her, but Ever since last week, we've been um, uh, brainstorming on what we can do for her, such as fixing up some of her toys, uh, creating certain tablet attachments that would help um, that would help her kids um, interact with the tablets they have there, as well as sending them toys potentially. Um, we're still working on the details. I need to send her a formal email at some point, but that's where we are at with her. Um, Amy Brewer is also from last semester. She reached out to us through Instagram. She's um, She's a teacher and mother at a school at the, well, that's what the abbreviations for West Pennsylvania School for Blind Children, I'm pretty sure. Um, she's pretty cool. She is the one who requested the beat bell. Um, she's the one who requested the beat bell from last semester that the toy planning group worked on. And yeah, we're planning on sending her instructions at some point. She's also open to learning from us and um, like sharing the, our experience with her colleagues. So that could be a good way to reach out and offer our services to others. Um, but yeah, this is all of our potential partners and organizations that we're considering or already working with. Um, it's a good list. I think we're doing pretty well so far if we can get all this running. Um, long story short, I mean, if you have any ideas um, for partners pitch, because this is how we've uh, been building this up so far and it's been pretty good so far, anyway. So now we're kind of getting into the groups and their progress so far. So Madison, did you want to take this one? Yeah, so I think it was Caroline and I did some brainstorming on kind of how we wanted to approach the semester and like what toy we wanted to pick. And we decided on a bubble machine because we've mm -hmm. never done anything for outdoors. And I think this would be something fun to finish at the end of the spring semester going into summer. Um, but I purchased this bubble machine right here off Amazon and it is on its way. So we're just waiting for that delivery. Um, and I did some research into other people who have switch adapted bubble blowers. And I think today the plan is to just start creating a format and then like watch through those videos with the other members of the group. So that's where we are. Awesome. And yeah, if you want me and if you need any help with formatting, um, we have the Google Drive from last uh, semester. But yeah, that's that's awesome. Good job. Uh, so this would be um, the group I am running, the hands on toy group. Uh, these are all the toys that we are uh, or not all of them. There are a couple that members have already had, but these are all the new ones that members are getting started on this semester. Um, it's a pretty wide variety. We've got some motorized cars and trucks. We've got some more advanced things like a keyboard and a, and a mouse that people are adapting. Um, the pullback cars and the penguin, which we've had since the club's founding pretty much. Um, <laughs> so hopefully we can get those done this semester. The pullback cars at least, because those we've already adapted one of them. So hopefully that works out. Um, for those who are in this uh, group, 
Uh, we'll go over this more once we split off into groups, but um, toys will be handed out this week. Monitor the group me, and uh, I mean like the group me for this specific uh, team. And yeah, just read the emails and all that to keep up to date. But yeah, hopefully these toys will work out this semester. And this would be the button group. Andre, do you want to take this one? Sure. Yeah. So um, last semester, uh, we overall only planned uh, the button project, uh, the idea, the goals. And uh, this semester, John was, uh, uh, thankfully for him, uh, for us, actually, uh, he prototyped the first button and printed it out last semester, last week. And uh, he found a bunch of problems and uh, he's doing some iteration and he's coming up with a second prototype and he's gonna print it out soon, I guess. And Wednesday, I'm gonna pick up some supplies uh, with, uh, with Cooper on the locker, on Stewart, and uh, we can uh, get the switch inside the first prototype, get it wired and see if it works, yeah. All right, that is awesome. So that's currently where we're at on the three groups. Um, I kind of wanted to have this recap because we're kind of about to dive into our main projects for the semester. So I thought it was kind of good to get everyone up to speed. Like this group is uh, has a button design already and they're working on uh, making it better. We are about to share our toys and or start working on our toys and Madison and Caroline have already um, begun planning for the bubble blower, which is really cool. When you guys, when, when the 3D button, um, when the th 3D button works and it's in a good shape, I'm gonna need a full set of drawings. I'm gonna take it to the foundry and get it um, copyrighted. All right. Uh, well, wh wh why are we getting it copyrighted though? So that it's not, nobody can take it from us and make money on it. Uh, well, I would suggest that instead of copywriting it, we could just publish it online, make it uh, open source, you know, and uh, slap yeah, a license it on, be... on that. And uh, like what a license does is like people can't just get our project and sell it. Uh, like you can't make profit off of our project unless they like explicitly uh, list our, 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 the project where they took it from and stuff like that. Yeah, there's different there's different ways of doing it, and you can do open project which or open source, which is fine, mm. but you want to protect it legally. Okay. So there's some issues with that. Um, that was some of the stuff that I wanted to take to them and talk to them about first before we put it out for anybody. I'd actually say yeah. instead of getting a copyright, I'd actually just go straight for a patent because that. Well, that, that's fine too, but they do all of that. And I want to have a chat with them first before we go a whole lot further. You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. I want to protect the university. I want to protect you guys. And I want to protect the group. Right. That's awesome. Yeah, that can work. Um, yeah. we're, def we're definitely gonna need to get this thing like tested on our own and then like field tested with right. like mm -hmm. actually with the kids we're giving this to. Like maybe we can yes. give it to Rachel and see if it lasts like I don't know, a month or something, and then we're yeah, just got to report on how long it lasts and mm -hmm. yeah, once failed. You, once you get all that done, then I'll take the copy and go talk to them and see what they say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And in any case, these things are free. Like if it can last the lifespan of a classroom, that's pretty good. And oh fine. yes, and if it's handled like well, look at the look at the beating the ones they buy get. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, material might be something we need to change up, but we'll see. Yeah. Uh, so let me, all right. I believe that's everything though. So um, Dr. Ann, if you want to stick around for the groups, you are more than welcome to. Everyone else, I need you to renumber yourselves real quick. Um, do you have anything else you want to say, Dr. Ann? No, I think I'm good. Um, you guys are doing a great job. I, I think what you're doing is really cool and we're heading somewhere positive and that's the most important piece. So I'm gonna I'm gonna take off. I'll um, I'll let you guys be. Um, I'm sure Cooper will bring me up to speed, and uh, we'll talk to you later. Keep it up, guys. Have a good one. Thank you. Thank you. See you. Bye bye later. now. Bye. So I showed the like bubble machine I got. Um, yeah. It was like, I went for middle of the price range, so we weren't getting like something super expensive, but we were 
also weren't getting like something cheap that would break really easily. Mm -hmm. Um, So I did some research and I found a couple videos, like get to them, of people like adapting different bubble machines. Yeah. Um, So I figured we'd like watch through these and just kind of like take note, figure, just see how they do it. Um, Mm -hmm. Take note of their considerations. And then if we have time, maybe just start a document and kind of start formatting it. Mm -hmm. Because I don't have the toy yet to actually look at the inside. And today we're going to be adapting the Blitz Bubble Blowout, which is a bubble machine. And these instructions are specific to this one, but they could also apply to pretty much any other bubble machine. It's really not that hard. All you really need to be able to do is solder a few wires together. So we're going to start by removing the three screws on the back of the bubble machine. Once those screws are removed, there's one final screw hidden behind this little bubble. All you need to do is pry out the plug and it will expose the screw and remove it. Once all four screws are removed, you can go ahead and lift the top of the toy off, exposing the fan, the battery compartment, and the switch. So we're gonna remove the button first and just kind of wiggle its way out. There's a couple of wires that connect the circuit board there, but it shouldn't be an issue. Then we're gonna remove the two screws that hold the fan assembly in place. And I just wanna point out that these screws are a little different than the other ones we removed and you wanna make sure you keep track of them. So go ahead and pull out the circuit board and the battery compartment. And then finally the fan assembly will lift out as well set the housing aside and now we're going to work on getting our wires prepped for our 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. So go ahead and snip the wires off the circuit board and strip them down. Next we need to drill a hole so that our 3.5 millimeter headphone jack can get to uh, those wires. So we're going to drill one hole in the bottom right hand corner of the fan assembly and one hole in the bottom right corner of the housing assembly itself. Now a great place to do that is behind the bottom right screw hole. Now we're going to prep our 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Go ahead and strip the black casing as well as the three wires inside. Your wire colors may vary. Fish the the wire through the housing. And through the fan assembly. Reinsert the fan assembly into the housing and make sure you have enough slack. Go ahead and secure the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack line with a zip tie. This will keep it from accidentally being pulled out. Now this is where things may get a little different for you. Our headphone jack had a white, yellow, and green wire, and we needed to connect the green and yellow wires together, and the white wire is separate. You may need to experiment in order to figure out what combination works for your toy. Go ahead and solder the yellow and green wires together to one of the wires from the button. And you want to uh, use a little bit of electrical tape to keep the wires from touching. And secure the white wire to the other wire from the original button. Reinstall the battery compartment, making sure not to pinch any wires and reinstall the original button. Reinstall the screws that hold the fan assembly in place, and now's a good time to give your toy a test. If everything works well, go ahead and reinstall the front plate and secure with the three screws in the back.
don't forget to re And that's it. Give your button a press and the fan should spin up. And as for as long as you hold the button, the fan should operate. When you let go, the fan should stop. I liked the zip tie thing. Yeah. Like that's not something I ever thought of, but that's a really good idea because there have been problems with kids like yanking on them and courts just like the connections breaking inside. Mm -hmm. And that wasn't like too complicated. Like you had to drill through a couple spots, but he did like a good job showing like it marking like where it went. And there's not many screws or and also not many wires. Yeah, it was honestly a lot simpler than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> I'm hoping ours is that simple too. I watched like part of this one. The Phillips head to open it up, and it wasn't going to happen. What I ended up doing was getting a precision screwdriver and putting it into a drill. This allowed me to push down really hard on the screw, and then I could gently squeeze the trigger on the variable speed drill to just about get it turning. After I finally got all the screws out, opened the toy up, and could see inside there was actually a very, very simple setup. So what we got inside is these two wires here which go up to a latching switch press on press off and what I want to do is I want to cut these two wires here and attach my three and a half mil socket in parallel to this switch put the switch to one side because we're definitely going to need it then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my ridiculously huge wire strippers and I am going to strip these two red wires. Now I've got these two wires clipped and exposed. What I'm going to do is I am going to get the soldering iron out and we're going to get to doing a little bit of soldering. First, I'm going to tin my soldering iron a little bit. Oh, love the smell of solder in the morning. And then we are going to just do that. And that's literally all it takes. That's what it looks like when it's in parallel. Trying to figure out what he actually did here. Yeah, I like the way this little scene looks. <laughs> it's like a whale kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I was looking, I saw this one on Amazon and I was gonna get it, but it was a bit more expensive. Yeah. So it goes from the motor to the button. Then. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this is his audio jack. And then to the button. Okay. So I think it's just so he can use the original button or the button he adds. So, like, that's an option, but probably not necessary. So I've put it back inside the original container thing technical I know that's where the switch was everything seems to fit into this right hand side so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick with that and put my socket on this side as well I've decided that what I'm going to do is I'm going to place it relatively high up on the body of this fish thing mostly because we have lots of soapy water sloshing around and if that short circuit is it's going to be on all the time you won't be able to turn the damn thing off so sounds like a good idea doesn't it what i'm going to do to drill this hole is i'm going to go from the inside out the reason i'm going to do that is because there's less likely for the drill bit to slip if you're on a concave surface i've got this big piece of uh, wood down here, it's that lovely butcher's block, um, because apparently drilling straight onto the table and taking small pieces out of it is, according to my wife, not acceptable. It's pretty thin plastic, it takes no time at all. So then you unscrew the collar on the three and a half millimeter socket put it through the hole and then screw it back on again. Make sure you don't screw it on too tight because it does have a tendency to pull out the middle part of the socket and ruin it. I've never done that. Now you replace all the inside pieces where they were originally. Close the whole thing up. Take your time with this one because it can be a bit fiddly. Tighten up all your screws and there you have it. It's done. 
so there's my switch nice big dome switch it's, uh, I think it's uh, 100 mils on the top I have got my 3.5mm socket there and the actual switch that makes things work is sort of hanging underneath as you can see I've soldered a couple of wires in there and I've put some screws in the closures for the Tupperware so that small people can so I like the idea of not putting the plug at the bottom with like soap and stuff. Yeah. Um, so like, I'm glad we watched that video because that's not really something I would have thought about. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, also definitely the like double and things which are kind of excessive, but I did have like good ideas like combining that and then the tie from the last one. Mm -hmm. Which and oh yeah, yeah, I was just thinking back to the one we got. Yeah, I'm hoping the one we got is as simple as both of these. Um, but I'm gonna make a document for us to start working on, and we can like put these notes in there so we don't forget them. And then just kind of start laying out the format. And then I know you have to leave in like 10 minutes for your next meeting. So yeah, I think that'll like finish us at a good point for today. OK, um, I don't remember how you guys formatted it last semester, but I'm assuming like. It was like tools needed. And then it was like a general picture. I think of like the toy mm -hmm. and then it was like the steps. Okay, I think we should do like a goal and just that's where we can like show the toy. Be like, mm -hmm. this is the toy we're adapting. All right, they just like go guys. So probably also I'm kind of thinking about like just trying to make our instructions look a little bit more professional, I guess. Yeah, that's a good idea. Because I mean, it was like easy to follow last semester, but like I feel like including more visuals and having more organization, like it would just look better and be easier to follow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Honestly, I it might be. Yeah. It, I don't think it would even be too much if you had like a photo with every step, just because like I know a lot of people are like real visual learners. Yeah, and especially like, for like a parent who hasn't done more than wire light switch at most. Yeah. <laughs> or like some parents haven't done more than just put the batteries in a toy. Um, mm -hmm. So like they're really gonna want to see every single step. Yeah, just double check and make sure it's right. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm thinking we can include like a nice header with the our logo or something, like one of our eight million logos we have available to us. Yeah, so we have like all of our T-shirt designs could be used as like a logo. Oh yeah, that's a really good idea. Okay, yeah. I unfortunately have to go like a little bit earlier because I'm not where I'm supposed to be to like get there <laughs> faster but yeah I'll okay. like look at the work on the doc a little bit over the week too okay yeah, sounds bye. awesome bye. I'll see you. have fun see ya okay awesome hi guys um all right let's get started so a couple of you came by today and got your toys. That's awesome. Uh, we are going to, I mean, you're more welcome to, I guess, just start working on that right now if you want. I'm going to kind of go over some notes and some examples of what we are um, kind of just doing for this week and what um, some general guidelines for what we're doing. Um, does everyone, all right, is anyone here like, not a part of the group me chat like for this specific group um and has everyone like responded to my message on there i believe everyone has let's see um, yeah actually i think everyone here has so we're all good there 
Um, don't know why my screen isn't sharing. I'm just gonna share it through here. Can everyone see that? Can everyone see the slide? The PowerPoint? Uh, yeah, I think. I didn't see any handshakes. I'm gonna assume it's a yes. Okay, um, so yeah, this is just stuff I'm writing down so I don't forget. Uh, just general notes, nothing crazy. Um, toys will be handed out this week. You, uh, I believe everyone here signed up for their times. I'll just be in the locker, uh, outside the locker, I mean, um, uh, with the toys, uh, wipe them down. We recommend that you come with gloves and that you wipe down the toys when you get back. We're gonna hand you the toys, which should be just a small toolkit um, consisting of screwdrivers, nothing crazy, because we don't want you necessarily making any permanent adaptations on your own, at least without letting us know first, like um, like wire cutting or soldering anything. Um, we're not giving you anything like that. Um, if you have the access to do that on your own, I guess by all means, just make sure you make you let us know before you make any permanent adaptations, because uh, we don't want uh, any. I guess, ruined toys, or at least something that we just want to make sure that um, everyone's where that we're all on the same page. So yeah, if you would like direction, I know someone asked on the Google form um, about specific disabilities. If you need direction or would like something to um, something to focus on, uh, we're here to help. We're here to answer your questions. Um, like if you need an idea for who to gear towards, just ask. Um, usually the way we do things, at least for now, is um, taking a toy and kind of look to it for inspiration. Like think how a kid would normally interact with it, how they would um, normally function with it, and then maybe see if someone with um, a physical disability might, uh, how they might not be able to interact with it. Someone with autism, how they might, how it might be too much for them or something like that. Um, Old meetings are available on YouTube for inspiration. If you need some ideas or want some reference, um, like for example, from the learning sessions we had earlier this week, or maybe if you just wanna see how the last few meetings were run last semester, that's always open. Um, again, let us know before you make any changes. Um, another thing kind of tying into the permanent adaptations thing, you are not expected to uh, like finish the adaptations on your own. We don't, um, require you or ask of you to, if anything we prefer you don't, um, finish the toy on your own. Um, I guess there are some exceptions like the pullback cars, for example, that's not mechanical or electrical or anything. Um, but for any electrical light up toys, we do recommend that you, um, or we require you um, work with us to finish up that adaptation because uh, we'd like to walk you through that and just make sure that we're all good there. Um, once you feel like you've gone as far with your as far as you can with your toy. Like if you think like, okay, I have a plan. I know what I'm gonna do. I've laid it all out. I'm ready to do it. Let us know um, whether that be through group me or I guess just tell me and I can write it down. Um, let me know and we can set up a day and time to meet in our lab, um, just kind of one-on-one -on -one and finish up those uh, adaptations. Um, yeah, like in this case, you should have a plan, like ideally um, maybe like wires to cut, where you want to drill, not just kind of like, oh, we need to wire this button or this reroute this wire to this uh, switch over here. We would like for you to know like specifically maybe which wire. Um, some are complex, some aren't. That's just why I make that note. Um, where you'd want to drill to uh, input the headphone jack. And yeah, it might seem like, uh, like you don't know the size of a headphone jack or something like that, but again, we're always here for questions. Um, these meetings are for you to kind of just brainstorm on your toy and ask any questions that you have along the way. So um, that's all I have in terms of notes. Does anyone have any questions? Whether it be how we're doing things, um, for the toy you're assigned, if you maybe have any ideas, you're welcome to run them by me. I knew we had some questions on the Google Forms. Maybe I just answered them all already, but okay. Um, I did bring some tools uh, based on what we adapted a couple weeks ago. So I'm just gonna show off some of the tools for now, just to kind of work all that out. Um, by the end of next week, it'll pretty much be the end of just me talking and you guys listening because you'll all have your toys by then. 
Um, usually how the meetings would be run last semester is Madison was kind of just there to advise members. I'll be there too in this case. Um, and she would be there while the members just kind of fiddled around with their toys, came up with plans. Um, I was able to help a little bit last semester, like Michelle, for example, came to me with uh, the mouse. I believe Olivia came to me with uh, like an alphabet keyboard. So we were able to brainstorm all that together during the meeting. Um, and yeah, like, and I think what will happen is I will be here uh, just kind of finishing up a couple of the toys um, so that they're ready to go, which are just a lot of patience. So um, yeah, let me run through a couple of the tools that we have here. If I can ever get them out. So this is just kind of like an example of what we have on us. So um, and actually, I should probably screen sharing for this. Um, so yeah, this is basically the button that we have on us. Um, pretty pretty straightforward. Small button. We got it from Glass. It's uh, it's nothing too special. We actually got it from Glass um, because they asked us to fix it for them. And we were able to fix it for them. It just ended up being a torn wire. But the way we fixed it was with electrical tape. So we didn't think it was entirely safe for them to get back. So instead we traded buttons. So we gave them our fresh new one for this used one, which to be honest, works totally fine. Standard audio jack, um, pretty big button about the size of my palm. Um, nothing crazy there. And then underneath we have like, I think it's like, a couple of their covers. You can see there's like a little bit of yellow. That's the same thing as this red one, just screws on, screws off. Um, I actually showed this off too. So there's like this hexagonal pattern down here, or not hexagonal, whatever, divided into six pieces. And you'll notice that that looks similar to how um, uh, John and Andre printed their design. So it's, they're basing their, um, their design entirely off of this one. Uh, not entirely the same, like there are design differences, but like the framework and everything is pretty similar. And it makes kind of like a little quick sound when you hit it. Um, so that'll be what we use to test the toys once we actually get into lab and everything. Um, these are some standard wire cutters. If you never used wire cutters before, I mean, or wire strippers, I mean, actually. Um, if you never used wire strippers before, there's basically a different size hole for every, um, for many different sizes of wires. They're labeled on the sides with millimeters and all that. Uh, so that's pretty straightforward too. If you ever need to just cut a wire, there's actually like blades at the very end. So you could, um, if you ever need to actually just cut the wires themselves, you don't need uh, scissors, you could use these. Um, I feel like I'm doing a toy review at this point. Um, this is our basic soldering kit. We ordered a bunch of, uh, this is actually the less advanced one. We have a more advanced one, but uh, I didn't bring that home with me. Uh, this is what we used for our soldering workshop about a year ago. Uh, it's pretty straightforward, pretty basic. Um, we used it to adapt a couple of the toys for this semester, so it works really well. Um, you have your basic soldering iron in here. I should take this out. Um, we'll teach you any of this, by the way. If you don't know how to use a soldering iron, um, we'll help you learn. It's pretty straightforward. And if you don't want to use one, like if you don't want to complete the adaptation yourself, that's totally fine because uh, soldering irons get really hot, if you don't know, in order to melt the actual solder into the wire. There's a little dial on the front to control the heat, nothing too crazy, but the side, and there's a little switch here on and off. Besides that, it just plugs into the wall. It's very straightforward. Um, and yeah, it's pretty much just solder from there, nothing too crazy, and some other miscellaneous tools. Um, we also have a drill. I did not bring that home because it's very heavy. They're not very heavy, but extra weight on my shoulder that I didn't want to carry. Um, we have a caliber. Um, so this is good if you ever need to do measurements or anything like that. If you ever wanted to measure, say, uh, what it, mm, we've used this to measure like when we're 3D printing components, which has been sometimes the case. Um, what we need to do when we're adapting a toy, we will need to design new components. So we, in order to measure um, the toy itself or the space that we're printing the part for, we'll use the caliber. And if those of you don't know, it's basically like a digital, it's basically a digital um, uh, uh, ruler. So it's a lot more accurate. I don't know if you view digital outputs. Um, wires, if you ever need some stray wires for your toy to help reroute things, like maybe you need uh, to bridge um, a feature to a button that's like all the way across the toy that the wire doesn't reach. Uh, wires are in here. We have plenty of material to actually um, 
cuts and then solder together to make that final connection. And safety glasses, pretty straightforward. We have a couple of screwdriver kits. This is not what you'll be getting, but it's pretty, uh, it's more or less screwdriver. You should hopefully know how this works. Um, we have some electrical tape. And here are, okay, here we go. This is what I want to show you. Here we have some audio jacks. So these are key to making any kind of switch adaptation. Now, I know all of you might not be making a switch adaptation. Um, I, again, don't want to, like I said this a couple meetings ago, we don't want to pigeonhole you into a certain idea, like think that, oh, I got this toy, I automatically have to do a button adaptation. You don't. Uh, that's just kind of what we've done because it's pretty common. But if you have another idea, by all means. But in any case, for those of you who will do a switch adaptation, I wanted to show you this. So this is what I dropped. Um, this is uh, the audio jack. So this basically acts like uh, if you still have a phone with a headphone jack, um, like Android users and anything. Um, this is basically the same thing that you have in your phone, just a bit bigger, because uh, they don't need to comp they don't need to factor in any size or anything. It has three pe three pegs. Um, I don't remember off the top of my head which ones you need to connect to. Um, it's but you only need to connect to two. You need to connect the ground wire to one of them and the wire that connects to the feature to the other one. So it's pretty straightforward. You just basically route two wires to the peg. And how this works is, so um, you unscrew this little rim at the end, which is kind of like a fastener, just screws on the end there. Um, you attach this to the toy, like you cut, you drill a hole in its shell. It's three, it's 3.5 millimeters. You drill a hole in the shell, you stick this through the through the inside of the toy, and then you on the outside, this is poking out this very end, then you just kind of screw that on um, and it tightens in place. We usually glue these um, because we in some scenarios where we haven't glued them, the toy actually ended up uh, this ended up falling out. So we will have everyone glue them in place. And yeah, so to kind of give some examples to kind of round things out before the meeting ends. Um, yeah, so we have the design store very recently adapted. Um, I'm not going to play this right now because it's pretty loud. Um, to kind of just give an example, we have, um, if you can see right here, that's the same kind of headphone jack that I just showed you guys. It's poking out and you have the little rim uh, to fasten it into place. Uh, this is yet to be glued, which is why I have this on me so I can glue that in place at some point. Um, another adaptation that was made actually, which is pretty unique to this toy, is uh, if you can see right here, this is the speaker. Um, and if you're wondering why it's white on the inside and why it's like not black or something for the actual speaker itself, there was actually, a, um, it was actually very, very loud. This uh, Stegosaurus, um, very loud. So we actually put in some foam to kind of muffle the sound. And that was the idea of, I forget who, I forget which member I had this toy last semester. Um, but it was their idea to kind of muffle the sound and they uh, got that done pretty easily. Same thing with this T-Rex actually, another very loud toy. So they kind of muffled, you can't really see the holes on this one very well, but uh, they muffled the sounds of this one too. In this case, we found an opening in the top, um, like a kind of clear area on the inside of the shell. So we uh, put the adaptation in there. Um, but otherwise it functions more or less the same. It roars, walks, kind of good stuff. Um, and then the last toy here, which is the Beat Bell, um, our biggest toy and possibly most complicated one we've ever done actually uh, so far because it actually incorporates multiple features into multiple buttons. So we, um, we've uh, attached three different uh, aux cords here. Um, we're still working, to, we're still looking to test it actually. And um, kind of, we're still looking to test it and uh, with different with mobile more than one button at a time so we're ordering extra buttons to get that done but if i were to turn it on for example so you'll see it turns on everything these uh these no longer work so understandably when you rewire a toy from one button to another the previous buttons no longer work um this toy was a bit tricky because it had a lot of wires to figure out 
took us a good amount of time to uh, work through. You might go a lot faster or slower. Either way, totally fine. Um, work at your own pace. That's why we give everyone their own toy. Um, but yeah, that was pretty much it, I think. Um, does anyone have any questions now? I guess. Or does anyone have any points they'd like to bring up? Okay. So last semester, Madison had like one-on-one -on -one time where like we went in and like talked with her. Will we be doing that this semester? Uh, that's a good question, actually. Yeah, I'm sorry. Actually, I haven't mentioned that. Um, the reason I haven't mentioned that is because we won't be doing those this semester. Um, based on a bit of feedback from Madison and kind of how they ended up working out, um, they uh, it didn't seem like they were super productive because you guys weren't actually able to work together on the toy itself. Um, you weren't able to like touch the same thing, do the Purdue guidelines. Now, thankfully, they've relaxed a bit now that we're a bit, now that everyone's a bit more familiar with the COVID situation. So the lab meetings will basically re be replacing those. Um, so yeah, uh, that's kind of what Olivia and I did to work on these three toys, which is to uh, yeah, work together. So. The lab is over in um, is over in Kanoi, not Noi apparently, which weirds me out. Um, if you guys don't know where that building is, it's right next to where is that right next? Is that right next to a construction site? That helps. Um, but yeah, it's a really nice lab. A lot of open space. Um, I know there's certain times that we need to meet there, but that'll all be worked out later. Um, does anyone else have any questions by chance? If you all right, um, I can, we have like five minutes left. Let me send out a quick thing to the breakout rooms. And or four minutes left actually. Um, but yeah, so I guess I'll just keep talking about the labs a little bit more. So it's a very nice lab room. Um, it's got all the tools we could ever need. Um, we won't end up probably needing them because we have a lot of the drills and uh, soldering irons that we need. Uh, thankfully, though, they do have certain things that we will end up being like uh, drill bits if we ever need to um, drill a specific sized hole. I know that that was tricky with when we were last there. Um, we were missing a certain size because I left it in the locker, but they had um, some sizes to make up for that. Um, it's uh, it's pretty straightforward. You guys will just come in or want, we'll do like one or two at a time, I think. It'll probably just end up being that anyway, based on everyone's schedules. Um, you guys will come in, work on the toy. It shouldn't take, if we plan it right, like if we plan out the toy adaptation right, it should just take a couple hours, um, maybe even one hour, basically. I think probably one hour, I think. Um, it'll depend. It'll depend on the toy too. Um, and yeah, you're not limited to one toy this semester either. I know one of our members finished up a toy or at least finished up the plans for hers last semester and then she just moved right on to another toy. Um, so you guys aren't limited to one toy necessarily. Um, you can work on multiple throughout the semester. Um, I think that's about it for the labs. And we're not running out of toys either. I just went down and sorted out all the toys that we have um, between ones that were assigned and ones that weren't. Pretty sure we have like at least, mm, I wanna say at least like six extra toys to work on. And it, that doesn't sound like a whole lot, but we only have currently 10 people in this call. So if that gives any perspective, that's a decent number. Um, and we could always buy more toys, kind of what we've been doing. Um, we, we have the funds to purchase specific toys if anyone has any ideas. Um, I know that someone wanted to work on like a, like a full on drivable car, um, like that kids that some kids have. Um, that would be a thing in and of itself. I don't think we would do that in this group necessarily, but it's an idea. So if you have anything specific that you know a kid might love, more than welcome to do that. Um, yeah. here real quick. Oh, it is possible. Um, oh, actually, you know what? Real quick. Uh, does anyone does anyone have any tools like on them? Like, does anyone not does anyone? Okay, 
sorry. Does anyone need screwdrivers? Like um, type in chat if you need screwdrivers, like just type yes. So I know how many kits I might need. Because um, we only have a certain number of kits and I think I'm gonna need to order more, but I wouldn't. Uh, the less amount of money we're spending, the better. Is that it? So just JP and Alyssa, does everyone else have like their own screwdrivers? I have to check. I might. Okay. I have a toolkit, but I haven't looked at it much. <laughs> and I don't know what's in it. <laughs> no, yeah, it's not funny. a very good one either. So we'll see. All right. No, but that's like, if this is it, then we might be good. I might not need to order more toolkits. Hmm. Um, we'll see. Because I was going to say, um, I if I am to order toolkits, I don't know if they'll be here in time for everyone else to get it. Um, we'll see. If if that is the case, I'll probably just have you. I'll, I'll just probably just have you come by to the locker, or we'll meet up somewhere else, and I'll just hand you the the tool the screwdriver set. It's nothing crazy, but I'm actually very glad to hear that so many people want screwdrivers. That is awesome. Um, so we don't need to worry about that. One toy is missing batteries. Um, for that person, I think I forget who it is. Anyway, I'll give that I'll give the batteries to them at a later point. That's not a big deal. It was one of the robots. Uh, I forget who. Anyway, whatever. We'll work it out when you get there. It's not that big a deal. Um, but yeah, so we're about done there, and I'm going to end the breakout room. So we're gonna do some closing. Hey, I am All right. recording. Nice. <laughs> Finally, first time I'm actually recording the meeting in the semester. Nice. Nice. Go. Oh, so everybody's doing video, so I might as well do video as well. <laughs> All right, so how's it going, guys? Um, everybody's <laughs> having a, a good week, a midterms. How's it going on that? Busy. Busy? Yeah. Pretty Damn. good. Okay, okay, yeah. Yeah, even though I don't have midterms, I'm also really busy every week. So <laughs> it's like I have midterms every week almost. You know. uh, okay, John, tell us about it then. Uh, so you got the first prototype printed out. Uh, yeah, so this is the first prototype. The arms kind of broke. And yeah, so those were way too thin. And so yeah. then I went with the square button idea. And I actually just finished printing oh. it. It works a lot better than I expected it to. Oh, wow. So cool. <laughs> but um, so it kind of works like this, where it has like springs that go in. Yeah. The only, so I don't know how durable it would be necessarily yet. I could uh -huh. print in a stronger, more lasting material. And the only other real issue I see with this design is the pinch issue perhaps and also like if you press one corner it doesn't really i, yeah, I feel it, like it might it, not register the center right yeah so you have to like get it right in the center or like to one side for it to go down enough so yeah i want to definitely work that out but That's overall hard. maybe the pinch issue all the easiest thing that you could probably do just add a fillet around the around the whole uh, um uh, outer outer rim of that uh of both the button and uh, and the uh surface mm -hmm. okay i'll definitely do that yeah yeah so uh, john uh, uh cooper is uh he's staying steward for like an hour on monday mm -hmm. wednesday and friday to distribute the toys so i'm mm -hmm. uh i'm gonna swing by there on wednesday to get the like the soldering iron some wires the switches and uh oh i forgot to buy the headphone jack adapters actually just remembered about that I'm gonna do that right now but um uh i'll, I'll get that and then um uh, when are you free like wh what's your availability looking like I think I'd be able to pick stuff up on either Wednesday or Friday from you or to get some measurements of the switch. So, okay. Uh, so I was wondering, okay, really sorry about this, Kate, because 
I think you're the only one that's not on campus. Am I correct? <laughs> You're good. I mean, it was like this right, last Wait, Natasha and Zach, are you both on, on campus? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay. I was thinking that we could... Uh, I don't know if Cooper's going to like this. <laughs> obviously, <laughs> I, I, obviously, stuff that uh, is not really, like, stuff that we should be officially doing, like, as a club, but... Anyways. We could meet as friends. Exactly. Yeah, yeah that's, <laughs> that's, that's the point. That's the point. <laughs> uh but we, we i was thinking we could either like we could meet on uh maybe friday or something to just so like everyone can see the bun right because i really wanted to see it in front of me see how it turned out uh, see if i had any suggestions and uh, maybe uh we could like open up a somebody's notebook a uh, laptop i mean which has the the can file there and maybe work together like I don't know. I have no clue how, what we could do, or if you guys are up to doing something of the sorts. Yeah, um, I'd definitely be down. Okay. Yeah, because yeah. I, I would need to meet with John to at least like give him the soldering, the supplies, or to get the button to do it myself at least. Uh, so I was like, all right, I guess we could just everybody meet or, or something. Yeah, I wouldn't be able to this Friday because I have an exam. Mm. What about you, Zach? Um, just let me just check my schedule. As oh. far as I know, I don't got anything planned. So yeah, that works. Okay. Uh, wh yeah. Where are you guys living? I'm living in Griffin. North. Griffin. Uh, I'm in McCutcheon. Oh, still. I'm McCutcheon. in Hawkins. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I I live right next to Mac Arena. Okay, but well, we're really all over the place. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, yeah. Um, cause I I I don't think we would be able to do this club stuff on a like open spot on campus, cause you can't really solder on like just a <laughs> random table. I think. <laughs> no. Yeah. No, you don't, you don't <laughs> want any splatter getting all, any all over the place. So. Although, you know what, though? The, wait. Open lab. There's an open lab um, in Potter that's, like, for polytechnic students, and they have a, a ton of soldering irons there. But is it an open lab? Mm hmm Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh, cool. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wait, Potter? Potter? Okay, yeah, Potter. it's in the basement of Potter. It's for, the, it's for polytechnic students. So gotcha. as long as you have a, but I mean, as long as you have a face mask, Mm, okay yeah that's an option yeah. you're good to go true okay that's a possibility i could look into that uh do you know what the room is i think it's um no i actually don't is know it off the top of my mind all i know I... is that in the basement it's there it's just like a big room i think it might be 63 zero six three could be because I I've been there for a few of my classes. Hold up, I have an email about it like just the other day, so I can probably pull it up. Yeah, because I feel like uh, we would have to book the room. You know what I'm saying? No, like, usually labs are not open. Oh, really? Nine a.m. Okay. Yeah. Nine a.m. is just open. I see. Yeah. Um. Uh, okay. What time are you guys free? My last class ends at 3.20. We should be pretty much free after that. Uh, I'm free all day on Friday. Okay. So I'm free all day as well on Friday. Not sure what time she doing. Um, I'm just gonna. Oh, I can't share my screen. Ah, uh, sorry about that. I, I don't think I can give you permission to share a screen either. Nine. Oh, I can share a link in the chat. That's oh, see if you can share now. Maybe you can share now. Uh, let's see. Yep. Okay. 
to show you something that I found. Okay. Um, uh, I just happened to be searching this stuff up and mm. I found a cross section of like a, of like a big switch right here. Yeah. Oh yeah. Something I'll, <laughs> this is really funny. Look, it's a really interesting artifact of like the, the, the pandemic, but like both John and Zach, you 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 both have never like seen an actual big button, right? And used it, like felt it. Maybe. Yeah, uh, not really, right? Yeah, I'll I'll see if I can get our button from from Cooper to let you guys like touch it and see. I'll see how how it goes, but can't promise you anything. Sure, sure. Okay. Yeah. But, but no, the, like the like the reason why I thought I would to show this is just because we can see down the middle like exactly like the mechanics of it yeah so obviously we can't copy it because i'm sure this is like patented or copyrighted yeah. stuff like that. i mean but, the the thing is also we are not doing anything for profit right right so right. it's not like patenting is a big problem mm -hmm. well no uh you, you know the, the patent protects your idea and if people want to license it, or if people, if people want to like use your idea, they gotta pay you. They gotta pay you royal, a royalty. Yeah, well, like even if I'm just three D printing, you know, just to see if it works. No, I, I mean if you're three D printing just to see. I mean, unless you're like selling it. Yeah, exactly. That's that's what I was getting at. Like, we're not we're not selling, so we can just copy it straight up. No patent. Oh, right, problem. right, right. Yeah, and also patents are like. It would take like two or three years for us to get right. it, most likely, and like seven grand or so. So no, Purdue, Purdue would cover it. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I forgot about the foundry. Yeah, and then but then they own the whole thing. So. <laughs> oh okay. That's the price you gotta pay, I guess. Yeah, no big deal though. So. You were saying that you got, so do those springs work? Yeah. Uh, can you, yeah. Oh, you know what? Okay. Do a really hard slam. Just see what happens if you do a really hard slam. <laughs> so good? Yeah. So good. <laughs> I printed it on like really high infill. So it, like sure. the it's basically like completely plastic instead of like hollow right. and areas so it's a lot stronger than the last one <laughs> nice yeah it seems to be pretty is it like easy to push is there like a lot of resistance or is it like pretty soft would you say i'd say honestly like i can do it with one finger decently easy not like super easy so i'm thinking i might thin up these arms to make it a little easier to push i wouldn't thin out the arms i'd see it if you can go up because you need the arms so that they don't break you need that thing mm. what i'd maybe try to do is thin the spring a little bit because that'll get that'll uh, uh make it a little bit weaker but still i would guess lighter i think okay I'll definitely give that a go. Uh, yeah, just uh, and then once again, the only issue would be just making sure that the whole thing doesn't like break after repeated use. Yeah, I'm I'm honestly considering using carbon fiber for the middle part because I I have a nozzle that can print it on my printer, and I already have a. Now. What? What type of printer do you have to do carbon? Um, fiber? yeah, it's a Prusa. It's, oh. yeah, it's. Yeah. No, yeah, it's just one, off the shelf one. Okay. Yeah, but um, I have like a special nozzle that can handle the filament a lot better. And I'm definitely considering trying a carbon fiber version just to see if the spring works any differently or better. But I'd say go for it. In terms of cost wise, though, that might be really expensive to do. On it, like this one part uh i was doing the math it costs like 75 cents to make the part that would be carbon fiber and regular filament and so in carbon fiber it would probably be upwards of two dollars so it definitely would raise the price but really cheap though too 
Yeah. It, yeah it's, it's still cheap it's after all. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. How would you though, how would you implement the switch um, functionality though? So the plan is, is that like when this goes down, the bottom part gets a lot lower. And so that will be hitting the electronic switch. So like when this middle part goes down, yeah. it's hitting the electronic switch. If that makes sense. Yeah, no, 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 it does. Okay. Yeah, this base isn't ready for an electronic switch because I want to get the measurements, but it'll just fit in here. Okay. Um, and then how would you think you could go about solving the issue of, uh, you know, uh, ghost hits or something like that? Like if you hit on the corners, it doesn't register. What, what are you going to do about that? Mm, I'm thinking of maybe putting in a couple of little bumpers so that maybe it doesn't go like it won't go at this angle very well because it'll scrape up against something and stop it. That's one possibility, but I also only finished this design and got it printed today. So I'm right. definitely gonna have to do some brainstorming on how to get that fixed. But if you have any ideas, definitely shoot them my way. I'm just, I think, hmm, I'm just trying to think of this myself too. Um, uh, yeah, so uh, what, um, Last semester, when I told you about the the cross thing, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the way I was picturing it is sort of like um, instead of it acting as like a spring, it would sort of be attached to the whole mechanism of the top part of the button mm -hmm. uh, in such a way that like if there's a crisscross right here, right? There's a crisscross right here. In any way you press the button, the crisscross would still go low enough so that the micro switch gets pressed, you know? I see. That was the idea. So instead of it, it being fixed on the borders and just going down like this, it was like supposed to actually dip. That, that, that's how they do it in the, in the big switch, right? Okay. Hmm. Well, definitely well, that that you, you need to redesign, you might need to redesign the thing for that because that's using yeah, Oops. yeah it's a whole different <laughs> different whole different idea like what they are doing mm -hmm. okay yeah that, that's why i wanted to uh, meet in person just so like you guys can see the button and uh, the others can see what you the, the prototype you did i think i'll i'll just I'll, I'll keep in touch through the group chat that works everybody's in the group chat right you all noticed Oops. that there's yeah, a, I, I did a group me group chat. I think I had it. Do you have pictures yeah, of the button, there. like uh, the, uh, the, the usual one? button, like opened up? I had some. Well, let me see if I can find them. Yeah, one, quite, one thing is having them, another is finding them. Okay, yeah, let me share screens. So like the, uh, there is a the top, the red part is just a screwing top. Yeah. So you can take it off and replace it with another color and stuff. Um, so there is this crisscross here that we can't really remove which is, that's uh, the, the tricky part, actually. It's exactly this me mechanism right here, this uh, crisscross here, because it's uh, attached to the base in such a way that it, it was molded like that, I think. That's uh, what it seems. It was just like inject injection molded directly onto the, the other mm -hmm. part. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure, but... Um, Okay, so here, here's a quick question. When you push the button down, what actually moves? Is Does the whole it's, like crisscross thingy move as well? Yes. Like in one it's hard to explain it here in the pictures, but um, like this is just the base uh, and there's this crisscross part. 
in this crisscross part, it's actually made out of two parts, right? It's made out of a, 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 of a ring that goes around yeah. the base. And yeah. there's also the, the actual crisscross right, which moves right. up and down. And it's attached together, right. you know, like that, sort of. Oh, so wait, okay, the butt, you said the button was drawn. Wait, it's like the button itself, it has threading in it? Yes. Oh, the, okay. The top has threading, yes. Right, right, right. And it okay. threads onto this part here. Right. Okay, that makes a whole lot. Yeah, I can I can yeah. totally picture how it works now. Okay. Three separate components, um, and just that thing that screws onto is, uh, it essentially is what is being moved up and down. and allows it to... Uh, um, activate no matter where it's pushed. Yeah, exactly. Okay. That yeah, because it, it, it's built in such a way that even if one side is completely extended, as long as the other one, the other uh, opposite side is pressed down, the middle part goes down enough such that the switch is activated. Okay. In that case, John, I'd maybe work on um, uh, I'd maybe work on the amount of travel that you have built in. If you can minimize it, you know, because if you can bring the uh, the switch, like the activator, um, just an, and just make it just enough so that you can just barely push it down and it'll still activate, you know, I'd say, I, I think that kind of goes hand in hand with this one. Yeah, I agree. I'm definitely going to work on that. I think once we have the switch, it'll be really easy to yeah. tune that stuff in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Let's see. Okay. okay, so I think we're almost at the end of like the sub team meeting. Pretty soon uh Cooper is gonna call us back to the main meeting, most likely. So do you guys have any comments, questions, concerns? What's uh, which major do you want to go to, uh, Zach? Because you you're FYE, right? No, I'm at I'm, no? I'm actually I actually just transferred in. This is my first semester here. Um, oh, I'm, okay. Yeah, I'm actually a sophomore in the polytechnic. Ah, yeah. gotcha, gotcha. Are you in a MET as well? Or? Um, no, I'm actually studying uh, automation. <laughs> Oh, right, right. I, I remember that. Now I remember that. Yeah. Sorry about that. No, it's okay. It's okay. Okay. So we've got one mechanical engineering student, one MET student, one automation student, and two comp EE. Okay. I know some special education majors that might be interested in joining the club, but I don't know if they are interested in the technical side of stuff so much. That's perfectly fine. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, uh, oh, yeah, are any of the groups like kind of less technical right now? Because I don't really know what the the like planning one does. Like, yeah, the that's the least planning? technical one. The virtual toy planning is probably the least technical one because you're just uh, like uh, taking a toy. I think that uh, Madison or Cooper like, uh, oh, yeah, opens with the it up. Bubble toy? Thing. yeah and then shows it and then they go through the process of like okay what should we do here what can we do here and stuff like that okay yeah so th that's uh i guess that's the mo least technical we have and uh the, yeah, they'd probably it, be into that even the I toy mentioned adapting part the buttons, and that. they were like oh my god yeah the kids love the toys that have buttons <laughs> <laughs> my wi-fi got lost for a bit like what happened <laughs> welcome back <laughs> sorry no, you're good. Didn't didn't miss much, honestly. Yeah, Just... yeah. <laughs> mm, yeah, but uh, uh, your your friends could even join the normal toy adaptation because it's not very no, it's not too too technical. Like if if you have no clue what you do you can just ask someone like where do i solder and then they'll, they'll tell you like okay just solder here and here. i had no clue what i was doing I'm yeah, you see? <laughs> there's there's your living proof that you you, you can't adapt the toy <laughs> even if you <laughs> have never soldered you're like before wait had you soldered before because i saw uh you, you had a the it's in like in the other place you you usually are there is something in the background that really looks like a soldering iron. 
Oh wait, me? Yeah, in your your case. Yeah, yeah. Is that yeah. no? Is your I... dad's or something? No, it's mine because I like last Christmas break. So I'm really like into guitars. Oh. So I got this like kit off, and then I was working on something with like wire pedal. Oh, like for the inside of it. Oh, the yeah. inside, really? Okay, that's really cool. I know that uh, there are a lot of people who make like guitar pedals for their senior design projects. I would love to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's for the electrical engineering majors oh, usually. Well, because <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's a lot of yeah, circuitry true. for true, guitar true, pedal. True. Yeah. Anyways, okay, let's uh, join back the okay. the main room, right? I right, see you guys. See ya. Uh, yeah, so you guys are all free to go. Um, feel free to leave us feedback if you would like. The form is always there, social media top left. Um, officers and John, I believe you guys wanted to stick around and we also need, well, officers have a couple things to talk about, but John wanted to mention something about the button or um, no, a uh, different project. So we're gonna talk about that. And if anyone else like to stick around to ask any questions, you're more than welcome to. Really quick, everyone, we now have a website. I posted a link to it in the chat. Feel free to check it out. I think it looks pretty cool. There's going to be more useful links put up there in the coming future, but for now, it's a website. It says what we do, who we are. If you want to tell people about this club, good resource to do that. And in the future, we'll put on some little tutorials and other stuff on there. So keep an eye out for that. That's awesome. I wasn't sure if it was ready to share. That's really cool. Okay, cool. Yeah, I think I have. It's looking pretty good. We can add more stuff to it, but it's a basically functional website now. So <laughs> that's really cool. All right. Um, yeah, I think I'll about do it. Is, all right, who's still here? Um, yeah, you guys are all free to go.